Snake plants are one of those houseplants that have grown the reputation of being able to be grown in low light. This combination of low light and lack of water needs makes them super ideal for most plant parents that are new to the game. However, the truth is that these plants can actually grow very rapidly under the right circumstances, meaning you don't have to have that slow growth you're used to, and it's a great plant to actually grow confidence in when you can grow it quickly. Whenever I look at plants, I like to get nerdy about it, and I like to go to to their natural location in the world. And snake plants are from West Africa. Now, West Africa has a number of different characteristics, one of which is a wet season and a dry season. They also are very close to the equator, which affects the light. And all these things will play into mimicking the natural habitat that these plants grow in to get the maximum amount of growth. So that brings me to my first topic, lighting. When it comes to lighting, we want to mimic the light that that plant is normally exposed to. In West West Africa, these plants are in a desert and so they get a ton of intense light for exactly 11 hours and 48 minutes on average. This is because it's close to the equator. So we want to mimic this photo period as much as possible because that's the natural photo period of the plant. So 12 hours of light on, 12 hours of light off will help to maximize this growth. Now the light that you give this plant has to be intense, meaning we want the grow light position directly over top of that plant. Now, if you don't want to run a grow light for 12 hours, what I want you to do is slowly adapt the plant to a high light condition if you've had it previously in low light. This means gradually over time exposing it to bright direct light, whether this be outdoors when conditions allow for it or directly in a window. Calculate how many hours of intense light that plant is getting and then substitute the with a grow light for the remainder. So for example, if your windowsill is able to get six hours of very intense light, you only have to substitute the other six with a grow light. So that's photo period. But what about ambient humidity? I always talk about this because it's so important to plant growth. Well, it turns out that snake plants are called cam plants, C-A-M. And this is simply its way of fixing carbon. It's the way the plant metabolizes carbon to allow it to photosynthesize. Now put all the nerdy stuff aside, that simply means that this plant is adapted to an environment that has very low humidity, meaning you can grow this plant without the presence of a humidifier or just humidity in general. This plant being a cam plant is what has landed this plant as the plant to have in your bedroom for sleeping. The reason for this is because cam plants release their oxygen at night and they also take up the CO2 during the night when the lights are off. When it comes to pots, these plants do like to be relatively root bound. It's not very often that I subdivide or even even repot these plants because they like those really nice tight conditions. The plants themselves have a rhizome underground and it's pretty thick. Think of ginger or turmeric root. It's very similar to that. These are able to store water in them and that's what gives the plants the ability to survive the dry season in West Africa where they are from naturally. Now with that being said, if you're an overwaterer, I encourage you to go with a terracotta pot. If you're an underwaterer, I would go with a plastic or a glazed ceramic. I have an entire blog post with a list of plants and what types of soils you should use for those plants depending on your watering personality so I'll leave a link for that down below. When it comes to watering this is actually pretty unique. These plants are used to just several months of very dry desert conditions and then they are used to months of continual watering. Meaning, if you're able to mimic this in some way, you will be better off. When you water these plants, you want to saturate that soil fully. So if that means leaving them in the sink overnight filled with water, you're going to get the best results from that plant. Allowing that plant to then dry out fully, again, is going to mimic that dry season. The plant, when it's in this cycle, knows when to put out new growth versus when it needs to go into storage. Some key signs that you're underwatering your snake plant is wrinkling or rippling of the leaves. If you allow this to happen, even when you go to water it, if it's severe enough, the plant will not come back from that and it will continue to stay in that wrinkled kind of gross looking state. So if you don't like those leaves, I heavily encourage you actually just to cut them off, unfortunately, because they're likely not going to bounce back. And lastly, the temperature. Now this is where I find snake plants to be such a cool plant and where they work really well in North America. I like to put my snake plants outdoors in the summer. Now you're probably thinking, Ashley, that's from West Africa. That plant is used to high, high heat, but it's also used to 
to you very cold nights. In West Africa, it can go all the way to one degree Celsius, all the way to 30, 40 degrees Celsius, meaning a Saskatchewan summer is the best time to put these guys outdoors. I tend to get very nice rapid growth off these plants. It mimics that very natural cycle that they're used to. So with that being said, if you choose to put these outdoors, slowly adapt them to the sun, meaning you wanna do a process called hardening off. I have several videos on how to harden off, but if you have any questions, just pop them down below. That's all I have for you guys on snake plants. I hope you enjoy these plants and you get some really rapid growth out of them by mimicking West Africa in your home. 